Hi guys, I just finished a sketchbook about a month ago, so let's look inside. This is an Archer and Olive B5 dot grid sketchbook. So it does have a grid on the pages. Let's see like the little dots. Um, the paper's white. It's got a linen cover. Paper's really nice and thick. I think it's 160 GSM. So it's really great for pretty much all media. Not great for things like watercolor, but really love working in this book. It's robust, it's big, I love that. So yeah, let's get going. The last thing that I had showed you in the last video was up to the sardines. So next I did these little sketches for a commission and then we'll pick up right here on March 23rd with Sarah Dyer's Patreon live class or Zoom. We did shop fronts, I used markers and Prismacolor Ecoline brush pens, Prismacolor, and Tombow water-based markers. These were really, really challenging for me. Um, but there was a lot of imagery, lots of stuff to look at, very overwhelming for me. Sometimes I feel so overwhelmed by really detailed works that I, I sometimes don't even know where to start. These were challenging, but very fun. I love moments of pattern like that there. I'd love to do this again. Maybe take my time, maybe just focus on one, maybe make it into a painting. I think that'd be fun. This was for one of the exercises for my Patreon. We did like these folk hearts and I made a whole like lesson DIY exercise that you could do on your own at home. We call it homework. And uh, this is what I did for mine. And while I was at it, I was playing with that Tombow marker and just kind of staying in that folk vibe and drawing some other little sketches, doodles, all with one color. I like doing this. In fact, it would be super cool to do a whole sketchbook just in one color. I don't know. This was actually for a drawing video for my patrons and the the assignment so to speak was collections like come up with a collection of things and draw them and this was around valentine's day i was thinking a lot about candy so i did a collection of candies and i really like drawing wrappers i really like drawing logos so that's what i drew all of this was tombow markers um these are some of the colors i chose and i also used my favorite blue indigo blue prisma color so Kristen had recommended that I check out Storefronts Japan on Instagram and I did and I was not disappointed. So much cool stuff to draw. Lots of chaos, lots of storefronts. It was a little overwhelming to choose, but I did a few of them. These were all marker and color pencil as well. Really enjoyed these. One of the signs had like this big shrimp and I just wanted to draw that, so I did that separately. This spread came from Room Portrait Club, and I wanted to use a limited palette, a monochromatic palette. I really like this one. This one was really fun. Again, rooms tend to feel very overwhelming for me because there's so much stuff going on. I think this is the kind of stuff I need to do more of so I can feel like very dense details are manageable for me. These were just some patterns that I was playing with. This was right around Easter and for my Patreon, I was working on activities that had to do with patterns, kind of inspired by Easter eggs, bunnies. So you'll see more of that. Inspired by quilts and I, I definitely want to come back and revisit this one of the things I like about Having a sketchbook is that you can you know kind of simmer with that and then Revisit it when you have a more concrete idea of how you might play with that We were I was playing with patterns on eggs. So I was looking at pictures of eggs and I was drawing patterns on them and Again, this was for my patreon pattern play pattern play exercise we just drew patterns. There's a whole homework activity for this one. And then for the video, this was so much fun to do. For my monthly patron video, we were doing, I was doing gesture bunnies. 
So just your drawing, but using bunnies. So I did this one first as practice. Then I did some other drawings for, honestly, I can't really remember why I did this, but this, but I did a whole spread of this and this one was really fun to draw too. And then this was a gesture bunnies that I did for the video. And I had several reference pictures and tried drawing these just as big, like wonky shapes. And then I used my pencil to develop some of the details. Super fun. If you haven't seen my gesture bunnies video, you should watch it. Cause it's, it was, this was a really fun drawing exercise and I recommend you try it. Then I got some new pencils and pens. And I think this appeared in one of my other videos on my art supply haul. So I just tested all of these out, which you can watch that video. I'll link that as well. This was from a Katie Moody live stream on her Patreon. She had some images and we just drew in time sessions. Really fun to do this. And if you, if you don't normally draw with time sessions, I highly recommend you try this, find some images, time yourself and stop when the timer goes off. Just really valuable. It helps to target the most important things, record them as fast as possible. And one of the benefits of that is that I'm not laboring over decision making. I'm not having decision fatigue at this, in this type of drawing. This one, I don't really remember if there was any sort of plan or <laughs> reasoning for this. I just was doodling in my book. I think I started with this one. I don't know if we had a, oh we had a prompt for my patreon and it was bulbs so we could draw like flowers that were in bulbs and then other things just kind of appeared I, I think this is katie moody's live stream as well a different live stream a different day really fun these these were live view cameras in italy so the people were walking and you kind of have to capture them as quickly as you can Super fun, very recommended. Um, I was doing this during my lunch break and I didn't have a ton of time to finish everything. And I really reduced things like the sky is just like some choppy blue. But I think sometimes that's when the best stuff happens. Also from the live stream, if I could work a little more on the sky, I would love that, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Really enjoyed this too. This was also a live camera so we were watching people walking around and then this was my practice drawing for our cake drawing and then I was doing just some fun drawings for Mexico I use Google Maps to find a, a random pin and I drew the street views there and I don't know why I drew Lucy. I feel like this might have been for a purpose, but I j just was drawing. This is my dog, Lucy. It's a portrait of my dog. And um, definitely a little bit more rendered and detailed than I usually do. So I like it. And then these were practice pages for my cakes um, workshop drawing that we were going to do. We just got together on the live and I think it was, or it was a live stream and I had pictures and we had time sessions and we drew. I don't think I usually, I don't put the live streams up on YouTube or the workshops. Those are only available to my patrons, but um, some of these are also videos that my patrons get for first access to and then they become public. Um, these were Mexico drawings and we we're going to do a live stream or <laughs> I can't remember or one of the um, meetings, a Zoom meeting to draw. Um, this was for a possible commission that I didn't get. So, okay. Here was our drawing session. These were so much fun. Just the palette, the colors. I love, um, very much inspired by Wayne Tebow. And also this was, um, in the month of Easter. And I was just thinking of like candy and sugar and sweet and pinks and just everything kind of like Easter inspired. So we drew cakes and these were so much fun. I really enjoyed this. I think the, my patrons did 
so great with these. The results that I saw were beautiful. And this was also from the same session. I did a lot of marker drawing, but then I also did a gouache painting. So I really like this one. And then following that, this was from, I think I was just drawing at home, but I was, I had been wanting to go to the botanical garden, hadn't gone, couldn't make it, kept putting it off. And so I just kind of pulled some images that I already had from the San Antonio Botanical Garden. And I made these little panels. These are, I think these are all gouache. All of these are gouache and color pencil. So these were really fun. And this one, I believe this is the one I ended up using for that month's postcard print. And then this was a sticker. Really love those. We were studying Mexico during this time in my Patreon. And I was drawing the flora and fauna of Mexico. And I was really trying to use a limited color palette for this. So that's why the colors look so strange. But I enjoyed this. It was fun. It was fun to use colors that are really like unusual. Like I don't use a lot of red, I don't think. This was inspired by one of Frida Kahlo's still life paintings. I just felt like drawing it at one point and I used markers and color pencils to do it. It's a little chaotic. This was from an exercise in my classroom. We were doing, we were studying pop art and I really wanted to encourage students to think about the symbolism and meaning of everyday objects in their world. So we created these really vibrant paintings of things that had meaning to us. And this was my example. Now my class, we always do brainstorms, thumbnails, media studies, and then real deals. So this was my media study. It was a small version of the painting. And then we did a big painting. And I was drawing cactus. That was one of our themes for that month of May for our practice, for our weekly prompts. I think cactus was on there. So I was just, I was trying to capture this light that I had seen in an image on the sides of the cactus. And that was hard. Then this was gouache and I did this one inspired by the theme that we had, which was deserts. And most of this is gouache painting and then some of it is color pencil. This one was really fun. I really like all of these. And I was practicing doing some, um, what are they called? Like some Mexican tile patterns. I was just looking at some reference images and trying to draw them or paint. I think they're painted, painted. That's gouache. One of my videos that I made for my patrons was about color theory and how I choose my colors. So I made a couple of color wheels and then I have this image, which is actually over here that I got from Unsplash. And um, I tried to draw that one using a different color scheme. I tried to find some colors that were not the colors in the image, not local colors, but I did want to explain how I got there. And I think this video is on my channel. You should check it out if you, if you want to know more about that. And then I did it again because this one was not it. And so I did it again. This one was eh, a little bit better. I feel like the, the light is a little bit more clear in this one. And then I'm reaching the end here. I did another gouache painting here of these little peaches, which I love. I love this painting. And these were my peaches that I grew in my backyard. So I was really proud of these peaches. And you know, before I ate them, I wanted to record them. So I painted these first. This was just some little, what do you call it? Storyboard, storyboard. And then here was the end. So for the end, I did a portrait of this great branch, which was fun to draw because I kept thinking like, I wonder if this is just going to look like lines, or what's going to make it look like a great branch. And it was these little blobs of green on the edges that really, you know, made that more clear. So this was the end. This was all, I want to say this was gouache, artist gouache, and all of this is artist gouache. And then there's some color pencil, but this was my final painting of this book. And that's the end. I have a couple of things in here that I already forgot about, some sticker sheets. And this book ended on May 17th. I hope you enjoyed this sketchbook tour. I hope it's inspired you to try something in your sketchbook. Until next time, happy drawing.